Angus became Angus, there was movement. Anyway, I'm not making my mind kind of carrying somewhere I wasn't heading. That's where I go. I am talking about the movement of that little wiggly thing. That's where I'm talking. I just where I start. I am not starting anywhere else. That little wiggly thing. Right. And then the movement became infused. And then we had Angus. Now, the, the motor skill of the wiggly went and combined with the motor skill of the stationary. Now, I could ask any one of you to do, to do something. Um, Miss Henry, let's go. Why you? Has to be you. No, I want Miss Henry to, to give us the action of the chest pass. She's a netballer. And she, if you don't remember, was the national, national coach of the, of the Sunshine Girls. Give us, yes. Chest pass, all right. Can anybody describe what happened here? Some, some of the actions. Push factor. I hear a teacher talking. She said push factor. What else? Step. Follow through. All right. So you see, thanks, Miss Henry. So there are a lot of activities that came together to make what? One action. And that in itself is, is movement. I want everybody to understand. So many actions comes together to form movement. Now, if I had asked her to shoot, the movements that she would have demonstrated would have been what? Different. Next one. So um, movement education is also used as a problem solving approach to children develop body awareness and use their bodies in an effective manner, unique to their own physical um, resources. And you remember again, yesterday when Mr. Angus spoke about somebody running, we spoke about the action of the person running that some of them, if we look on a textbook, everybody will be doing the same thing. But it would not be very effective. So he spoke about Shanda Paul and his batting action. The ugliest bat batting action in the world. But it's very effective. So maybe if we try to change his batting action, he would not be as effective. It's the same thing. So each of us, when we are trying to carry out a movement, it has to conform to a number of things. Example, our body type. Not saying that it cannot be effective in carrying out that activity. So we, the child, that you are going to be coaching, you are going to be teaching, will have to use their cognitive skills in order to get effective movement. It makes the individual aware of the movement of the entire body and to be intellectually well as physically involved in, in movement education. Now, any action that you are going to be doing, right, that is going to involve the entire body has to have certain elements. Now, the elements, if I had asked Miss Henry to do the push pass and she stood straight without, it would not have been maybe as effective. So we have certain elements that are involved in every action. Okay. Learning takes place as the individual accepts and attempts to solve more difficult problems. So the more complex the skill is where the individual now has to what? Think about it, reason it, etc., etc., in order to get the complex skill. Since movement education is based on solving the problem, the teacher sets the problem, then guides. Because I can tell you, rise. Shoot the, bas shoot the ball in the basket. So why did you, and not just? Well, I 
All right. So why was he able to do the correct thing? Experience. Muscle memory. Him say, somebody do it. Or do it. Forgot to Jamaica me You understand the word do it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So he, 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 learning took place. And Dr. George yesterday spoke about knowledge, acquisition of knowledge, that we can give the information that does not mean that you would have, uh, you would have acquired knowledge. But it's through a process that he's able to do it. Through either practice or seeing it being repeated over and over. Since movement education is based on solving problems, a teacher sets a problem and guides, assists, and suggests suggest, um, solutions. I mean, I'll go back to what I just said to you. That we possibly would have had the way how we are supposed to stand in the, the batting stance. But there are some batsmen who does not have the correct, what we call, and I want you to put correct in open close quotation. Open your minds to say because he's not standing the correct positional stance doesn't necessarily mean that he can't perform. So the problem solving, the child or the athlete or whomever must be able to reason in his own head, what is it that I, I, makes me comfortable, makes me able to do what I'm supposed to be doing? Now, the teacher may use a series of questions to pose movement challenges for children to solve. Example, asking the students to make a shape. So let us say we want three individual students to make a shape. We want to make a D, and we are using three students to make that shape. Now we have two students who are short and one who is a bit taller. And we say to them, you are going to lie on the floor and you are going to make the shape D. We don't want you to tell them, oh, you go there and you go there. Let them explore. And to see, and may I ask you the question, who would you use to make that long part of the D? Possibly a taller person. And there are other attributes that we could search for, because we could speak about flexibility, and all of those things that would come into play. But we allow them to explore, to be able to, to form the D. Movement education uses a thematic approach based on experience. Movement education program shifted some of the responsibilities from learning to children. Because there was a time in education when we keep doing what? Tell, 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 tell. And there was not enough exper experimentation on the part of the child. And again, Mr. Angus spoke about the philosophy, the development of a, of a philosophy. Because World Best and I, we, we, we teach sports psychology. And we always say to our students, when we ask them a question, we never say you're wrong. Because we have to remember that there was a time when them said the world, if you go to the, if you travel too far, you drop off over the age. And that was the belief that was held for a very long time. And so new concepts will emerge. And sometimes we might be surprised some of the things that we said could not be done, that children will show you that it can be done. Yes. So movement education program shifted some of the responsibility of their learning to the children themselves to explore, to do things that you not, not even the beliefs that them could do. Some might be able to do it how you want it to be done, while some might not be able to do it how you want it to be done, but they still get it done. Now, the methodology that was used, it featured problem solving and exploratory approaches. Movement is about exploring people. 
And you know, it's interesting when you teach movement and, and dance and you ask people to, to create whatever comes to their mind. You'll be surprised to see some of the, the things that they are able to conjure. Just through thinking. Adopting movement education led to the rejection of physical fitness. And let me just orient the arm activities. Because there was a time that we might see on our future slide where fitness was taught to replace, to replace movement. That everybody started thinking about being fit, being fit, being fit. But what is it that brought about this fitness? It was this movement. The different movement actions that we did that would bring about fitness. Now, then we started talking about training, training, training. But training comes about because of movement. Now, there are, there are certain factors that, and I heard some of you started talking about flow, etc. when I asked a question. So the factors of movement, or some of the factors of movement, because this is not all, we speak about weight, we speak about, speak about space, we speak about time, and we speak about flow. Now, go back from the weight. Weight, body weight, we talk about body weight. How, do you, how are you able to manipulate and to use your body weight to get movement? So like to fall and roll, all of those things will be dependent upon your weight. Space. What space do I have? Yes? To, to move about, to, to, to facilitate this movement. And then the space, we speak about the general space, and what else? Personal space, all of that has to be taken into consideration when we speak about movement. The time. How long is it going to take to, to do one aspect of movement? So when Miss Henry was shooting, was, was um, making the pass, how long did it take to withdraw, to push, etc., etc.? That is going to cause efficiency. If she came here and she stayed how long, then she slowly, it would not have been as effective as getting that quick. So time, the flow, flow, jagged movement, easy, smooth movement, all of those things comes into consideration when you talk about movement, right? And then when you talk about the flow, how graceful is that movement? How smooth is that movement? Now, the development of the curriculum, curricular approach to movement. Um, 1960s, 70s, and the 80s. The intent of those working at the time was to provide a framework that teachers could use to apply these movement concepts broadly in three learning domains. And I listed the domains. The cognitive, the psychomotor, and the effective. Remember when we spoke about movement first, we talked about learning, which was the cognitive, movement, your flow, your time, etc., etc., And then, movement in itself, as a society, will not be done by you alone. There are some movements in which we want what? A partner. We need others around us. You remember when I spoke about that D? One person can't make a D. It is going to take two, three, or four persons to make that D, depending on the size, etc., etc. Now, so the affective is how we interact with each other in carrying out this function. So the three domains, cognitive, which is the learning aspect of movement, the psychomotor, which is the doing aspect of movement, and the cognitive, which is the emotional coming together of us all in move to, to, to facilitate this movement here. Now, remember we said that there were some persons who, who came and they started talking about training. And so movement education moved to the back burner, was not seen as, 
has been as effective. Now, during the late 1990s and the early 2000s, this came back, the movement education came back. Now, the development of national content standards for physical education brought back the essence of movement. So what were we doing now? We were organizing, because if you understand, and I heard Mr. Angus again, spoke about it when he spoke in, um, he was spoke, speaking about uh, the history of physical education and sport. When he spoke about the, the, the history, we remember that at one time, physical education and sport was the biggest thing. And then it fell off because of philosophy. People had different philosophy. Now, during this period, we had to get standards. It wasn't like everybody was doing as they please, how they see. But we now had standards. We now had a way in which we can approach the teaching and learning of physical education. And this came about in the 90s and 2000s. The revival of the movement education emphasized that children should know basic movement concepts. So now we had the concepts of what is to be expected in a role, what is expected in a jump, and um, question, ladies and gentlemen, uh, hop, a hop versus a jump. Many of us don't know the difference. But there are concepts which would allow us to be able to identify a skip versus a hop, et cetera, et cetera. So that happened during that period. Yes. Ah, that was quick. I hope everybody understands I'm going kind to of talk fast. <laughs> now I'm going to invite Miss Henry to do her piece. Okay, so morning again. So I will continue on early childhood education. But just to say that in Jamaica, our curriculum, our system that we have, we have early childhood, primary, secondary, tertiary. But the main focus that we start with is movement education. In our education system, we have different strands. Our first one is movement education. Then we have sports and games. And then we have safety wellness and safety and well-being. All right, you can go ahead. All right, so the movement, what, what is the importance of movement education at early childhood? So our main focus is that we want our students to have fun. We are not rigid. We don't emphasize too much on skill base, but we must ensure that all our activities are fun-related from the various aspects of movement, from locomotion to non-locomotion to manipulative skills, which we will look further on when we go into our breakout groups, right? So we also try to look, and as, as educators, we also try to facilitate our students to develop great movement pattern and gross motor skills by the use of arithmetic and songs, rhythm and songs. So, there's a difference. When we have rhythm, we have mostly beats. When we include songs, then that's different. So we use those two areas to guide us in developing movement skills for our young um, children. Move on. So the importance of movement, we try to keep our students engaged at all times. So although we have a different approach in terms of how we teach, we actually use the STEM approach in our, in, as one of our methodology and the 5E approach, which I know some of you might know already, and we will reintroduce to you, right? So we try to make it fun, we try to make it engaging, we try to, to use the student's curiosity to actually develop their skills. Because at that age, they tend to be very curious and want to know more. And what we do is to try to implement and create activities that will stimulate that. All right? So some of the benefits of physical education at EC level, you might see them transition into primary and secondary level also. So reduce depression and anxiety. We think that sometimes the younger ones might not be, be depressed and they might, they might not have an anxiety problem, but they do, and it actually helps them when we create our activity or build our activity to stimulate that, all right? 
develop healthy social and cognitive skills. Social skills are very important. We know about social skills in relation to interpersonal skills. So how well they respect each other, how well they share with each other, right? Are some of the aspects of um, social. Cognitively, we know that because of the movement, education, it will help to improve their alertness, yes? It will also try to increase their perception of things and how they analyze and, and create things on their own, right? So we try to do that and allow it to be more student center than teacher center. We are the, 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 the highlight of the class. All right, so it also helps to develop their emotional skills. Very important. We need, want to teach them how they can empathize with each other. Yeah? Um, give me another um, emotional skill. Happiness. So we want to bring out happy mood, positive thinking. So when we create our activities, we really must pay particular attention to the emotional aspect. Building strength, important. Whatever activities you do, it's going to improve their strength, improve their, their, their muscles and bones, right? Um, Self-confidence and concentration. So the more activities you give them, the greater you develop on the simple to complex activity, you will see growth in terms of their self-confidence and their concentration. All right, so it also fosters better social and motor skills. We spoke about the social skill, the motor skills. We know that particularly we want to improve on their fine and gross motor skills at this area. So whatever activities we do, we have to create where they're using their hands, right? And we know the gross motor skills, we're using the bigger muscles. So the running, the galloping, and, and also using equipment to, 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 to bring about um, motor skill development is important. It also incre increases school readiness, increased learning capacity. You know, so their concentration level, how well you explain the activity and the students are able to perceive what you're doing and execute properly is something that we want to highlight. So don't feel like because there are smaller children, we need to keep them at a small level. We also increase the level under which we want to achieve the different um, objectives that we write. We looked at developing muscle bones and, and joints. Faster. So as, they, as you create your activities as educators and coaches, it, should, it will foster developing muscles, bones, and joints. But we also have to pay in particular attention to the type of activities, the equipment that we use that they are specifically related to the age group. All right? Um, reduce the risk of lifestyle disease. They are small children, but still we know that when we include movement education, it will lessen the likelihood of these um, lifestyle diseases. So Ms. Hu Thomas will look at um, primary education. Good morning, everyone. All right, um, can I see the hands of the primary school teachers in the group? You saw the primary. All right, do you teach from grade, um, like standard one, is it grade one to six? Okay, st first year up to standard five. All right, um, let's for instance say, okay, it's your first time or you have a class, a new class come September, and you are out there. You already know to give your, do your physical education, all right? Um, what's the time span, or what's the time, what amount of time you get for your PE class? 25 minutes max, and, and it's one time per week? All right, and so, the t the, okay, so you will now have to think about now what are some of the things that you can do to complete to all of your curriculum for the primary that they do not lose anything from it because you don't want to shortchange them. And so when we look at the primary, it moves up from the early childhood. Now, in Jamaica, um, as mentioned before, our especially track and field championship begins at the early childhood. 
So we have what we call early childhood track and field championships. All right? Yes, so we have the two-year-olds, the three-year-olds um, running, yes, and doing all sorts of activities in various championships. All right? And then when we get to the primary love, level now, there is somewhat of a relationship sometimes between the basic and the primary coaches and teachers. So we are already have a previous knowledge of who is coming to us and what are some of the talents that we are getting. And so the primary school level, we're able to nurture those talents. But let's go on to the movement primary. Right? It seeks to improve their body parts and increase consistent control and refinement of more complex movement. So they have already started in EC. You're coming to primary to what we're going to do, reinforce, and then we move on. Use movement to create and perform sequences. And what we want to do is want to use music. Music is one of the best ways to get children's attention and have them moving. You like um, soca, calypso, we like reggae, dancehall. When I say to my children in a practical class, okay, hit the music. Even if you were not interested before, you're getting up because you're ready to dance. Yes, and so we want to stimulate their brains. To develop sequences of movement in response to stimulus, as I said before, the music is one of the stimulus that we will use. For example, all right, so if I put in an R and B, will everybody get up and dance? No, right? All right, soul rock steady, no. But let us play some soca music yes, from your seat, you start. And your foot start moving on the decks. And when I say get up, of course, boom. Everybody's up and ready, right? Apply movement strategies appropriately. Demonstrate an understanding of variety of physical activities. Now, this is what you want to know. This is what you as a teacher need to know. What you know you're going to transfer to them. All right? Okay. Perform movement skills in a variety of activities. When you talk about variety of activities, we're not limiting them to um, a sport, one sport, two sports. Um, primary school teachers, do you do a variety of sports? Okay, the, um, just list two of the sports for me, please. All right, good. So those are two examples. All right, so you want to ensure that they are performing movement in a variety of activities leading up to sports. Demonstrate an understanding of the basic requirements of dance skills and applying movement and concept as appropriate as they engage in a variety of activities. Have you ever done the drill that goes and you find out that they might fall over because they can't control the feet or when you ask them to do bounding, stuff like that? This is what we are saying to you that when you are able to transfer the knowledge and, of course, the practical of these exercises or activities to them, they will be able to be more confident in themselves. As I speak about confidence, um, have you ever child that because they can't do the activity, they don't, they, they shy away? We have, to pay, we have to pay attention to those as well. When we're doing movement education, pay attention to the children who, because they believe that they can't do it, when the line is, you have a, have a line and they keep moving to the back of the line and they keep moving to the back of the line? Yes. Make your activities fun in such a way that they're able to try and try until they get it as my colleague had said, fun is important even at the primary level. Demonst demonstrate skills using physical education activities again. Any skill that it incorporates whatever you're doing, you demonstrate it or you can pick to say, come and let me pick on your mind, you know? Pick your brain, pick the child's brain. Okay, I want you to run. I want you to hop. And those are basic, simple movement that you want to start with. Even though you can say, okay, basic school already did it, you need to go back and reinforce it at the primary level to ensure that the person who probably did not get it at basic has a chance to get it at primary. Yes. Increased physical fitness. Um, when I was growing up, there was a thing that they said that we are not supposed to exert ourselves as children, even to the point where they said um, physical fitness doesn't necessarily mean that um, you need it at the primary school level. 
right? But we see in Jamaica where we have grade one and two, boys and girls, I mean, when you see them, you're wondering if they're actually grade one and two children because they have developed their, a little boy did this the other day. He said, auntie, I exercise every day. I said, what do you do? This is a four-year-old and he's doing push-ups. He's doing wall press because he does track and field, you know? And so this is what, these are what our children are highly involved in in Jamaica. Develop both fine and gross motor skills. Teach self-discipline. Have you ever gone on a Christmas holiday and when you come back, you say to your athletes, what active rest did you do? What did you do during your Christmas? And they say, well, we went to several hours and eat lots of dinner. Nobody told you that they did 10 push-ups or jog around the yard, right? Self-discipline in sports is what we need to teach the children. Because if only time they do activities when they come to you, it means that over a period of time, the Christmas break, the summer break, they're going to regress, and then basically you have to be going back to the beginning. All right? Improves children's self-awareness. That's also an important key, because if any individual is not aware of him or herself, whether physically, mentally, emotionally, intellectually, you'll find that they have been shortchanged of something. So let us not only work on the physical, but we work on the other areas of their well-being. Helps to identify early talent potential. We call this the coach eye. All right? You as teachers and coaches have to have an eye for this. So if you find that when you're outside with your children and you put a group of five boys together, and that one boy runs away, leave everybody around the track and come, the first thing you're going to say, boy, this is a talented boy. He's talented. He's going to do well. Blood. Right? When, when you can identify that at the early stage and you work on it, then you're able to work on the other areas of that athlete. But don't leave the rest of athletes out because you might have a 400, an 800, or a thrower. All right? So we look at the strands. We have three main strands, and they are the movement, which, con which consists of motor control, movement, and dance. And we have games and sport, health, safety, and well-being. Now, for the games and sport, those are examples um, of the movement control to refine and increase the range of skill, movement and dance, create simple characters and narratives to dance. And game and sport is basically, now you're looking at their technique. You're looking at their individual technique. So that is when you move to game and sport. Health, safety, and well-being. Do not ignore the health, safety, and well-being of your children. Because it's what, it, this is what helps to build all the other aspects of their life. As they go through their school, they become preteens, and of course, your athletes that will represent you in the future. And these are substrands. Now, substrands for athletics includes running, jumping, throwing, understanding and appreciation for all of these when it comes under um, physical activities. Substrand dance, exploration, creation, and performance of dance, and of, of understanding and ap appreciation of dance. Games, sending, receiving, and traveling, creating and playing games, understanding and appreciation of games. All right, all of these come true whether you play basketball, netball, football, rugby, track and field. You will find that all of these strands and substrands will be coming out into your weekly activities when you engage your students in physical education and movement education. All right, so this is a video. Both arms swing upwards. This is what the child will do. For example, I will just say to you, hop. Anybody want to come and hop? Any gentleman want to come and just do some <laughs> basic mo <laughs> movement? <laughs> one volunteer. You must have a one volunteer. Ah, very good. So you can tell her to up, up forward. All right, turn around, change. Other leg and up down, up going down. All right, there are some children who might not be able to perform this um, basic skill, you know. They say it's voluntary, but they may not be able, they may fall because of lack of balance and body control. 
And so what, what you do know is that when you tell them to do this, you watch them do it without any formal instruction. And then as you watch them, sometimes we use videos. It's very good to video these activities that your children do so that you can look back and say, okay, where do I need to make the correction of this particular movement? So that was just a simple, a sample video of where you would, what you would start with in terms of working with small children. Now, when we get to the grades three to six, that is when our physical education becomes more regulated for our children. We find children getting involved in competitions from grade three to six, and we have our primary school championships. One of our colleagues will be doing a presentation on that later on, so you can really see what it's all about. Um, thank you very much. Good morning, colleagues. Um, my name is Steve Davis, and uh, I will present you on the secondary level education. But as I get into that, what I'd want for you to do is to put the entire thing together from the early childhood level, the primary level, and the secondary level, and see how it leads to better sports performance and development. Because what I found, being a, a coach of volleyball at the national level, I find that sometimes the kids come to you and they are not prepared for a national program. Because somewhere down there, at the early childhood level, the primary level, they were not adequately prepared for the, 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 the sport at a high level. So as PE teachers, as facilitators of physical education and movement, we should have within our heads something that is going to say, this boy or this girl is going to be a good triple jumper. So I say one day to my colleagues, I can teach triple jump at grades four or even at age four. And they say, you're a madman. How is that possible? But we do it every day. We do upscotch. Huh? Upscotch. That's triple jump. So if we have an understanding of what is required and necessary to develop future sports star from an early age, then life gets easier for us as we become coaches at the higher level. Some years ago, this young man from um, Cuba, Leon, at age 17, was the best male volleyballer in the world. Nishida, out of um, Japan, at age 18, is one of the best players in the world. This did not happen at um, grade 10 in school, no. For you to be considered a talent in some of these um, countries, you have to step out of high school into a national program. It would mean then that the work was done early on in the education program. So it is our hope that when we should have left Trinidad, the relationship between the coaches, the teachers at all levels, is, is one of cooperation and understanding. I would have said yesterday to my friend down there that those teachers who coach at a higher level teach their classes different from those who just do teaching because they understand what is required to become champions. We're so fortunate at GC Foster that in all our departments, we have a national volleyball coach that is responsible for volleyball. You have a national track and field coach that's responsible for the entire college. And it goes like that. So the, the, the students are given that kind of experience along with the Ministry of Education's uh, mandate and curriculum. So movement at the secondary level can no longer be just this hopping, stepping, jumping. It becomes more than that. I have two videos that I want to show you, but you're further down in the presentation, but I can tell you about them. We can go? All right. Go to the other one first. And we'll talk about this as we relate it to, to movement and our program. 
the one with Jiba. Uh, All right, let's take this. So, here are 10 catches that were taken along the boundary line. Let us look at it and see what it involves. All right. So, he ran, he backpedaled, he jumped, he had the presence of mind to catch the ball in the air, over the boundary, releases it back into the field of play, come back over and catch it. Again, because the rule says, if I am outside of the boundary, with the ball in hand, that's a six. If I touch the boundary, and we are told that our brain is designed to do one thing at a time. True? Yes. But we can put them in sequences so fast if we are trained from an early age. I have admired the, the, the kids in the U.S. When I used to do traveling to the U.S., at age four, these kids were learning how to slide to, along the baseball field. So the, the other countries, they slide around the boundary better than the West Indians. Oh, what grounds are too tough? If you slide, you're going to scrape up. True? So it's not taught. We'll do some diving, we'll do some rolling, but sliding around the boundary is not a what thing. We go slide on asphalt, you go slide on stones. No. <laughs> but, <laughs> but the point is, as PE teachers and coaches, we need to understand this, that the kids must use movement at the primary, at the secondary level. And I may implore you that motor learning teaches that Coordination is best taught from age 7 to 14. After 14, we understand the concept of fear. So certain things I won't take on. At age 7 and even earlier, you know gymnastics, when it starts, I'm age 4. Because the kids have no fear. And especially when we deal with females, if I get to 14 and you tell me to do something that is going to make me look ugly, I'm not doing that. It will not be done. So, if to do the, the steps for javelin is not taught from early childhood, if to do the triple jump is not taught using abscot from early childhood, and is mastered by the end of primary school, early high school is perfection, then we'll only be teaching people to sprint. They won't be able to do the hurdles. So, the concept that um, we're age-bounded because in the early years, it must be what? Fun. So, at the secondary level, I prefer to teach combination movements. Even if I'm going to give agility drills, and I'm a volleyballer, so I'm biased, and I give you the drills, by the end of the last, by the time you come to the second to last obstacle, a ball will be coming at you. And not only be coming at you, but I want you to put that ball at a particular spot. Because when we compete to be successful, we have to overcome obstacles. We have to overcome speed of the ball, the flight. We have to come, overcome trickery from the opponents. And then we have to create our own trickery in order to be successful. Why is it that we do these things that we do as, 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 as P teachers and coaches? Demonstrate something for me. She's going to demonstrate the skips, all right? The skips in track and field. All right. Go with all of that. That's one. Go on again. Why do we do that? Why is the skip done? Your coaches, why? Why are the skips done? This one. Wait. But it's to ensure that you don't overstride. Because if you overstride, you're going to be hitting the ground so far in front of you, your foot is going to spend too much time on the ground. You're going to be slower. So we want to get them under us. 
So if you as a PE teacher, a coach, does not understand this concept from early, it will not transcend into mastery of uh, sports. So many of us, we do it, but why do we do it? Why do we do it? So those of you who are more advanced coaches with this kind of knowledge need to go into the schools, the primary school with the 800 students and one PE teacher, the primary school, <laughs> and get this kind of mindset into the teachers and the students so that by the time they reach you with my brother, you have no problem with that. You can look at what? Tactics, strategies, developing strength, endurance, power, the biomotor abilities. Sports development is an entire community. I can tell you this, back home, if a little boy is running well, the mother hold him, draw him, carry him, go to the school that you want him to go. See me have one little boy here in fast. Take him to the school that they want him to go. I, I was saying to one of the, my friends around here that to get into the quote unquote best schools, you have to have grades within the 90s and up in the PEP exams. But if I have a little boy or a little girl who is fast, you will get into those schools before you do the exam. Yes. Because the teachers, the coaches, the parents have the ability to recognize. I don't know if parents have coaches I too, but they recognize this. So it become a community effort. And not only that, you don't want to go to some of the sports days with the type of parents that they have. Yes. So we as coaches, let me show a few more of this so that they can feel good about it. So the, the catches, like, like I do, watch this one. Back in the field of play. That's movement, education. Made it look easy, eh? And that's teamwork. Make the dream work, right? Yep. Release before you touch the ground. Teammates supporting. Does this happen by accident or it is practiced? It has to be practiced and from an early age for it to be perfected later. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. Ne, ne, next time. <laughs> yes, the girls are doing it too. Wow. So because of their movement skills, they are able to avoid an accident and still catch the ball. Right. Wow. So that's safety at play because of good movement coordination. <laughs> uh, trusty mate. That look West Indian is she? Steve Wall. Wow. 
سی فور فائنڈ والا باغ ہے سو سو ورم سین کالیگس اف وی ویٹ انٹل دیز کڈس گیٹ ٹو دا نیشنل پروگرام ٹو اسٹارٹ ٹیچنگ دیز تھنگس اٹس ٹو لیٹ اٹس ٹو لیٹ سو وی نیڈ ٹو سی یور سیلس ناٹ جسٹ ایز پی ٹیچرس بٹ ایز ایجنٹس آف چینج فار دا ڈیولپمنٹ آف اسپورٹنگ پاورز Right? Let's look at one for volleyball, because I'm biased to volleyball, right? <laughs> so this is Jiba. And look at the play. Uh-huh. Same play again. Covering the entire back line. Right. Why was he able to do this? Because at an early age, He was taught to move, dive, then protect himself and feel safe and be ready again. He made two plays in the one rally. All the way to one side of the back line, all the way to the other side of the back line. And was comfortable in making those plays. The kid or the child that is not taught good movement principles, good combination movement, will be afraid will be afraid. And we said, why didn't you play the ball? You must want me to kill myself, sir. You mad? <laughs> so success in sports, because we know, those of us who quote sports, know that success in sports comes from a manipulation of the rules. We have to go beyond the ordinary in order to be successful. So if you just see yourselves as PE teachers who teach all the, no, no. I am teaching the next track star I am teaching the next footballer, even from, uh, from preschool. That is what, that's the kind of mindset we have to create within ourselves as a country, as a nation. I am hoping that we can create that kind of mindset in other, our other sports. It's big and popular in track and field now, but we want to get it to the other sports. So you here, um, ladies and gentlemen, if you notice, I did not point by point to the PowerPoint, but it captures the essence of, of, of what we want to achieve through the, this program. I am going to look at another, another skill, not necessarily movement, that we seem to leave out a lot in our training and our teaching. And this is what we call cognitive training. For this one, I'll ask you to help me. Can you use your hand to pat your head and the other one throw up the belly? Pat your head, rub your belly at the same time. Uh, all right. It, some of us can, some cannot. <laughs> all right. Thank you. To play sport, to play sport, to, to be effective in running a, 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 a hurdles race, to be good at the triple jump, to be good at javelin, to be good at high jump, requires this kind of cognitive processing that will enable you to do the right thing at the right time in the right sequence. So when we go out today, those of you in the secondary group, I will be giving you some activities, just like I said, pat your head and remember that will enable us to develop cognitive perception. So do the combi combination um, ABC skips now. So this one, it takes a lot of brain work. I don't have the kind of brain to do that, so I have to ask her. It's a combination of all the skips. I tell you, I don't have a kind of brain. So apart from just being able to improve your running technique. It is also to help you. How many strides am I going to take between the hurdles? Which leg I'm going to lead with? So some of these activities that we see for on a daily basis, it may appear just to be an activity, a drill, but it has other consequences. And the coach, as the coach, you must understand and appreciate that in order for us to get that kind of result that we need when we coach people. 
in, in, in other presentations, I would have heard passion. I would have heard commitment. And let me tell you, you have taken up something that the smart person would call you crazy. Only mad people coach. Coaches don't sleep. Coaches don't have a life. And as a result, I hear people talk about hard work and so on. Just as a warning, learn to take care of yourselves as coaches and PE teachers. The work never ends. So learn how to take care of yourself. Because you need the energy for yourself, but you also need the energy so that you don't have, um, what do you say, medical emergencies. <laughs> you need to take care of yourself. I know you have a lot of energy. Who have a lot of energy? You have a lot of energy for your 200 students. But take care of yourself so that when you go home, you don't have medical emergencies. All right? All right. So, guys, when we go out later, what I want from you for you to do, when I give you this concept about cognitive training, I'll give you an example. I want you to create your own ideas for cognitive training, your own ideas for combination movements to enhance a particular skill or something. So, for instance, I may say, uh, that, 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 position pass, that, 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 position pass, something. You come up with something that you think will make the players better at thinking, better at moving, more coordinated for whatever particular sport you want. Are we good? I thank you for your patience. Any question? Question? Yes? Yes. Yes. Okay, are you hearing me? Lovely. Rhonda Jones here. Okay, what I want to find out, because right now I'm fuming, I'm being honest here right now. So I'm trying to say, let's stick to Jamaica. Right. You all have a program and you all are trying to help us here, right? Right. Good. So I'm asking now, we're looking at a chain link. So we're looking from ECC right. to secondary. Right. So you start, as you say, basic, and it might, but the basics are always important. Because right. I coach cricket, so I know, you know, you talk about a lot of stuff, but basics is basic, and you could get as high as whatever, right. the pinnacle and, and whatever, right? Yes, right. looking good. So, I just want to find out, because I have a real problem in Trinidad, right? Mm -hmm. So, I, I just want to find out, is it that you all have a program set in such a way that it's sort of mandatory, that this physical education that goes from ECC, primary, the secondary, and it's that, that continuum continues, or is it that you're coming here now and you're telling me that you just have this GC, uh, what, Foster College, right. and it's done only there, or is it done in Jamaica? Because I want to, I ready to okay. migrate. Just to give you a quick answer, because later on, just to give you a quick answer, because later on you'll be getting a presentation on that. But we have a national sports day for um, daycare. <laughs> Does that answer your question? We have a national sports day for daycare. Yes. <laughs> just, just to give you an idea. <laughs> but a, a later presentation will attend to that. But you know what, eh? I am not... It's a part of our curriculum. And right. apart from the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Sport, we have other organizations mm. that have input into sport. The in sports. Right. Well, I am to not taking away from around. what we are doing now. I am really grateful for it because right. to be here, I consider myself to be a star among stars. <laughs> Beautiful. Right. So, but no. We have, I can talk for my school. Right. We have over 600 plus children, and I'm the only, well, let's say one other person who will do physical education in the school, because right. my class would always benefit. My children are never short of anything. Right. All the size I have here, I never kept them back from doing anything, trust me when I tell you that. Right. Trust me, no, all they know me, those who know me, know me. Right. And you know what hurting me? We are not short of 
sporting equipment. I know that. Yes. About sin. Yes. yes. Right? You should. And when we have these things come into the school, look. <laughs> sure. Take it easy. Just, just take it easy. I, I, I feel right. the so, passion. But, but I tell you what. I, I tell you what, though. In, in preparing to be here, we develop our programs through school in Jamaica. But when I looked at the, the, the Brazilian system, they developed their program through their club system, right? But what they do, they got the media involved in ensuring that the sporting events are televised so the kids can see it and then the kids want to play. In Jamaica, our championships, the primary school championship, they are televised also. They're televised. I wish it, it were the same for volleyball, but track and field, <laughs> it's televised. So it, it, it's, it's a national consensus that is needed to ensure that the, 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 the program develops. Yes. You get the point I'm making? Yes. And, but I tell you though, the, the success that we're having, most of our schools, the, 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 the progress started with the PE teachers and coaches who are passionate yes. and decide. Some schools, the PE teachers may even sell things out of their department, what and so on, in order to get funding for the programs. Other schools, they have good support system uh, in terms of the alumni and all of that. Uh, yesterday, the minister said that we spent what? 11, we spent 10 million, 10 million, and, uh, and uh, that's not enough to do what we do. But like I said, it's a community effort. Parents, our students, all the organizations come together for it to be successful. Those of you who were not there in Jamaica to see it the other day, it's a, it's a carnival, it's a party, it's, it, it's a way of life from the vendors, the, the, the coaches, the media. It's so big that a, a, a media house can tell you that this school is going to win champ this, this year with 900 or 352 and a half points before champs. Because they would have seen the events, they would have seen the performances of the athletes, and they can predict who will win champs with also the points. And most times they are what? They are somewhere near there. That's how, how it is. Yes, it is. And, and that is why, that's why we want Trinidad to get better so that we can get even better. <laughs> Any more questions? Yes, sir. I'll come daily. Yeah, hi. Not really a question, but I'm looking at um, a link here. We're seeing we have sports, uh, military sports. We're seeing we have education. But I'm also looking at health and fitness, that aspect of it. That is one of the biggest components. Um, it could be a, a persuading point to actually encourage person. Because at the end of the day, if you have a healthier individual, you, have a, you can have a healthier community, healthier community, healthier nation. Less stress, less strain financially on the healthcare system. Yes. OK? Um, we could look at nutrition. But sad to say, because people have a um, sedentary lifestyle and junk food just all around the place. People don't recognize the exercise and um, the food is actually medicine. Right. Okay? Not the junk food, but the, yeah. the good food. Okay? Right. So what I'm looking at is that Ministry of Health, you know, from, could be part of this encouraging a better quality of life. Here. Physi yeah. Okay. Physical, you know, having some functional fitness, you know, for, for people. Even those persons who are... Um, I'm into special needs also, um, working with persons with disabilities. Disability, okay. okay. And take, for example, um, the blind, okay, they, their health right. decline, okay, because of lack of physical activity, right. okay. I'm, I'm mostly working with the deaf, yes, but the deaf in Trinidad and Tobago have a lot of associations, right. okay, sports associations are doing pretty well. Right. So what I'm looking at holistically is that Ministry of Health in Trinidad and Tobago should really be on board on this part to help, you know, develop sports yes, also. Yes, so, yes, so yeah. perfectly right. In Jamaica, we have what is called the Jamaica Move, which comes out of the Ministry of Education. 
out of that would have things like um, lowering the sugar content of the foods and the drinks that are sold in schools. Some schools have gone ahead and certain things are not sold here in the canteen. So it's a part of the Ministry of Health. It's called Jamaica Moves. So they're encouraging that the, the kids move more because one of the things that I think is affecting us is that when our quality of life gets better, when our quality of life gets better, meaning each household has a car, um, the kids don't walk to school anymore, they are picked up by the buses, you buy them because you are so tired and annoyed when they bother you, you buy them the gadgets and they play those, so nobody goes outside to play cricket again. Nobody wants them to get cuts and bruises, so you keep them in and then you tell them, go do PE class, you're crazy. It won't work. So <laughs> if from home, we encourage these kinds of things, some will buy into it, but for the most part, some won't, but for the most part, they'll, they'll follow it. But yes, we do have that in Jamaica. It's called Jamaica Moves with the Ministry of Health. And they hold regular seminars, and they cut down on what is fed to the kids and how it is done. Can I talk now? Yes. Hi, so good morning, everyone. Good morning. So to address my colleague's question, I am Shelley Slater from the Ministry of Education, and I also have my colleague there. So I want to respond with regards to the Ministry of Health. The Ministry of Education, in collaboration with the Ministry of Health, have a number of initiatives. And one of them is the TT Moves. We also partner with the Ministry of Sport and Community Development, also with regards to Sport TT, and we are all working collaboratively in ensuring that those initiatives are outlaid. I'm saying that in terms of the resources that were given to the various schools would have been because of the Ministry of Health. And I'm sure that all the schools in Trinidad and Tobago would have received those resources. I am also saying with regards to the Ready, Set, Go project, we also have that where one, we are ensuring that all schools do some sort of physical activity during the day, which is very, very important. With regards to the Ready, Set, Go project as well, each school is supposed to have a primary school physical education lead. So all those initiatives are on board. Some are still coming on, but we are having a number of meetings with the Ministry of Health, with the Ministry of Sport and Community Development and Sport TT to ensure that we have a healthier and more productive citizenry. Thank you. Angus. Good afternoon, everyone. Jay Hill. Um, just to add a little note to what everyone has been saying thus far, I think we have to understand our culture here in Trinidad and Tobago. We are very academically oriented. Um, <laughs> and unless we could start seeing sports as a business, we would continue to be a recreational society for sport. So we could do all these fancy things and everybody would drop out after a while. Yeah. All right. That's a, that's a great point. But let me let me let me um, break, like put some light on that. I know that the, the 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 bragging rights of the schools, right, in back home, they are linked to sports. So that football, Grey Shield cricket, track and field, school challenge quiz. We have gone ahead and created the, the situation where if you don't have certain grades, you won't participate. So you're perfectly right in that we should ensure that the entire individual is taken care of. And earlier, I would have I had conversation where our students usually go abroad for scholarships. And when track and field season was out, they had to play another sport because they were on scholarship. Or I went here as a, a, as a sprinter, but I had to do 800 meters too. So they were overworked, burnt out, and most times they did not come back with the requisite education, education qualifications. Since um, was mentioned about Siva Francis, 
and the re he, he revolutionized the club system in Jamaica, we would have retained most of our athletes. And let's put it again. Some of our athletes were, and not that, maybe they're not, and I said that they are not inclined for academics, but their interests lie elsewhere. So for instance, what we do at GC Foster, we have students on the World Championship team, we have the massage therapists that go with them. So programs are structured and designed to ensure that whatever that is worthwhile that you would want to get into, say become a massage therapist, a fitness trainer, anything. We even have the equipment manager for the World Championship team coming out of our institution because we do uh, equipment management in, 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 at the institution. So we think about the entire man. And sometimes we may make the mistake of thinking that everyone will go in a particular way, whether it be the sport way or the education way. And some are going to be left behind because not everyone will be inclined in that way. So it, it's, per, not, it's, it's good and it's right that we think about everybody in that sphere. Maybe a man wants to be a taxi driver. He's, he wants, when he gets out of, of school, to buy some taxis and drive them along the road or employ. Yeah. Okay. He wants to be a taxi driver. What do you mean to be physically educated? <laughs> 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 All right, thank you very much, Mr. Davis. Um, nothing? All right, um, at GC Foster, we like to give away. We give away. <laughs> you see, that type problem, you know. You see, Mr. Davis just spoke about the gadgets, the phone. It is, it is a problem as it relates to physical education and sport. Because when you give the kids the phone, then they sit down. I mean, my son will sit from 7 in the morning, and the only time he gets up, you know, to do what? Yes, until 1 in the morning, playing games and whatever. But we're going to be... We want to look and see if only they pay attention. If you're paying attention while we're presenting. Um, well, that was what happened a while ago. Question time. All right. Um, during the presentation, we... Yes. I don't want to make it too hard. That is why I'm... You're off. Yes, we spoke about movement education. And uh, I was going to use a methodology by calling, taking a random name to answer, but then... But then I mean, lottery, we talk about a lotto, you know. Yeah, but since I hear, no, 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 I won't. So the first person, yes, who can give me one of the definitions for movement education? Who is the first person with hand up? Good day. Um, let me try this. Um, physical education deals with the cognitive, the physical yes. aspect of movement, movement, um, different patterns, different skills, development in physical education. It also deals with the emotional side and the physical side also, too. All right, it has the three elements. Yes? Sound goes. Yeah. 
a better look. <laughs> All right. Now, um, in order to facilitate movement, next question, in order to facilitate movement, we said that there are various combinations. Who can name three of these combinations that facilitates movement? Space, time, and flow. Space, time, and flow. No. Um, cognitive, psychomotor, and affective. That question is a hard one. <laughs> we spoke about combination. We spoke about things that we had to do together to, in order to facilitate movement. In order to facilitate movement. Yes? Movement combinations. Right, for to, to get motor skills. Is it movement, game and sport, and health? Safety. Health, safety, safety well-being. No. No. I'll give you one of those. When we spoke about the combination, we spoke about coordination, and we said that there are other things. There we go now. Yes. We spoke about balance, we spoke about um, stability. So who, who, yeah. she got she got it. Repeat for the benefit of the others. Balance, coordination, and stability. That's it. So the question I'm had? All right, at the, at the secondary level, could you tell me one thing that movement education seeks to look at? Repeat. No, you never say it loud enough. <laughs> okay. Increasing range of skill with refinement and control. Refinement and control. Thank you very much. <laughs> In Mr. Davis's presentation, he showed you some videos. Now, I want you to tell me three elements that in catching that, that cricket ball that the players are, any one of the sequences, that the players demonstrated. <laughs> no, the elements, the elements. Balance, agility, um, reaction. Yes, yeah, speed, spatial awareness. So I was not lost, we did learn. Yes, so. Ladies and gentlemen, so what we have gotten is that in order, to have, in order to have movement, proper smooth movement, is that we have to combine a number of activities in order to have high skill movements and be able to think, the cognitive part of it, to think quickly and to get things done. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much.
I want to thank the presenters for their presentation. We're going to be getting you um, more involved in many activities as we go into day, the afternoon segment along with day three and thereafter. Now, yesterday we did something important. We created the cooperative learning group, right? <coughs> We gave um, roles and functions and described such. We gave you a J card, Q card, and we collected your random call cards, right? We are not really operating.